we go. Today we're going to be trying to heat treat this little knife. So, this blade is a little bit different to normal. What do you think you're doing? This blade is a little bit different to, than normal. Um, so this is actually a blade made from D2 steel. Or Aerodai 150 or Aer ISI D2. Not entirely sure, but regardless, this is a very different steel. I've never worked with this steel before and I really wanted to give it a shot. However, I don't actually really have very much in the way of uh, equipment for working with this steel. Currently I've got the forge blaring nice and hot um, and I wanted to use what I basically have because I bought a nice big old, big old section of this steel and I'm not entirely sure whether or not I can even use it. So I thought the best thing to do would be to test out whether or not I can use it by making up a very simple blade and uh, seeing whether or not I can harden it. I don't have an awful lot of information, I'm not an expert on, it, on any of this. If you're new to the channel, just a disclaimer, I don't know much about this steel, um, but I'm trying my best and hopefully I can make something with it. If you, have, if you guys have any tips for me for this particular sort of thing, let me know. I have a little bit of information here and I'll try and link everything in the description about hardening this particular seal. Uh, and I have watched a, a few videos on it but I haven't seen anyone use a regular forge rather than like a tempering oven or something like that. And for those of you who don't know, a tempering oven is like a... is essentially an electronic forge or a kiln, I guess, would be a better description. And it basically just holds it at that temperature. It's like a high temperature oven, essentially. I don't have one of those, and I don't have, like, I don't know what they're worth, but I'm going to assume it's more than a grand. This particular metal, what I understand is that it, it doesn't like to be oxidized, or it doesn't work well if you oxidize it. Materials don't have feelings, so they don't like or dislike doing anything. So this here is some uh, stainless steel foil. This stainless steel foil is just like your aluminium foil, just like your tin foil, but it's stainless steel. That's the main difference. And the reason why it's, hey, it has to be stainless steel is because stainless steel won't melt at high temperatures. So we're gonna make a little pocket out of this. Hey, wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? That's probably good enough, right? Alright, so you might be wondering what the plan is for this. Now that it's all nice and sealed up, we're basically going to chuck this inside the forge, and the plan is, is to heat this up to 900 to 1000, by actually probably close to 1000 degrees Celsius, and hold it there for about 30 minutes. Yes, this is a required step. Inside the forge we have a piece of uh, steel tubing and hopefully this steel tubing is going to help sort of hold um, temperature without letting it heat up too quick. This has the knife inside it. We're going to let it heat up to about 1000 degrees Celsius and then we're going to hold it for 30 minutes. So one of the cool things that I found out about uh, D2 on the Artists and Supplies website, which is where I got the piece of steel. I've worked with things like uh, recycled steel, such as car springs, like coil springs, leaf springs, uh, files, and I've even worked with things like 1095, 1075, I think it was, as well as 1084. And all of that is reasonably straightforward. You heat it up, you dunk it in oil, and you're done. But when it comes to hardening, there's a lot more to it. And I'll run through some of it just right now, whilst waiting for that to heat up. Basically just holding it at 995 degrees Celsius or 1000, uh, to 1025 degrees Celsius, and that's holding it for 30 to 45 minutes. And then we need to quench it. Now, D2 quenches completely different to any other steel that I've used, where it, uh, whereas most of those steels were an oil quench of some kind. In this case, it's, it's an air quench. Here's my plan for that, 
And I know it sounds completely stupid to anyone who has actually done an air quench before, but here's my thought train. I don't have dry ice on hand, or liquid nitrogen on hand. I mean, I could probably make some, but it would be a massive pain to make dry ice right now. Also, it would mean using up a fire extinguisher. What I do have is an air compressor. So what's the plan? Well, the plan is, is that I use the air compressor to cool this thing down rapidly to whatever temperature is required, which I imagine would be close to room temperature, below 65 degrees Celsius. So, you know, just get it to about room temperature. I wonder whether or not I could get it colder by attaching some bag of ice, or like something like a bag of ice to the end of the air compressor. Hmm, not sure. Anyway, so my thought is, is that if I can get this to work, great. Brilliant. However, if I can't get it to work, I can always try it again, right? Right. Hopefully. It's obviously still really hot and then I'm, I'm burning. No. It's, it's fine, it's cold. I'm gonna get this open, and I'm gonna test it. I'm actually really nervous about this. It's fine. If it didn't work, try something else. No. Not at all. Maybe maybe it's the file. Maybe the file is like super sharp or something. Okay, as much as this file is slightly better, it's like nothing that I can actually be proud of. That's hard. But it... Okay, it's hard, but it's like still somewhat biting in. Also, now I have to repair that. Ooh, that was bad. Ooh, that's bad. So it still... It still bites on the edge, but it doesn't bite well. So maybe I am doing something right. I think I came up with a new idea. So I got this um, meat tray thing. So they're like chicken or something. And I've got this like grilling rack and the plan is is that I'm basically gonna do it the same way. I'm gonna try and get it a little bit hotter so I'm gonna have this inside the packet as as I did before. I'm going to place it inside this tray and then cover it with this grill plate that will have ice on it. Once again this is probably something that sounds completely stupid and probably won't work but by having this like that, I'll be able to take the air compressor, once again, blow air straight down on it, and hopefully that should rapidly cool it. Hopefully. So now that the ice is broken... There we go. Now, time for the for the truth. Ooh. Oh my god. Yes! Yes! Oh. It worked! 
I'm gonna try and do a side by side comparison so you can hear the difference between the two. It worked out in the end. I still don't really know whether or not it was one thing or the other that actually made it work. Uh, so if anyone else has any insight to this, once again, please leave comments. In. That's amazing. That's awesome. You know, this might not be uh, an incredibly efficient way or a very easy way of heat treating or um, hardening this particular steel. It would be way easier with things like a tempering oven, um, dry ice, all the rest of it. Totally forgot to uh, mention after heat treating, which is tempering. And tempering is of course making sure that you remove some of that hardness so it isn't as brittle. You remove some hardness and increase elasticity. Uh, now, in the sense of D2, it's a little bit different from regular steels, however, it's mostly, for the most part, the same. All you need to do is, basically, you grab yourself a normal conventional oven, chuck it inside, at about 205 degrees Celsius, up to about 540 degrees Celsius, obviously, depending on what you need. Um, and remember that you'll lose some of that rock ball hardness th the higher the temperature. What you wanna do is you wanna heat it up to 205 degrees Celsius, hold it there for about an hour. After that, then let it cool down, nice and slow, to your regular air temperature, and then bring it back up again. Hold it for an hour and let it cool back down again. Pretty well it. There's uh, nothing else really to talk about in, in the way of this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, um, maybe subscribe. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. In the meantime, remember to stay safe, happy grafting, and as always, cheers.